In this video, we're going to have a look at how to create a bit of 3D mass modeling. Uh, in the previous week, we created this file and we were using this as a design exercise. So we created some slabs and we use this to be able to create a massing for a section to understand in terms of a, a building envelope how big we could go on a site. Now I'm going to use this same information rather than starting again and we're going to once we've created a bit of mass modeling we're then going to use that information to be able to create a sun study and shadow diagrams as well. They'll be in, in later videos, preceding videos. For now we'll just do the, the massing and, and we may even break this up into a few different videos with those different um, sun study diagrams in order to just make them not too long. We've got these 3D trees as well. Uh, for now, I'm just going to turn these trees off so that it's um, not getting in the way. How can we do that? When we select it, we can see that it's on a layer called RMD Landscape Trees Existing. I could just right click Layer, Hide Layer, and that will turn it off. That won't turn it off permanently. I need to understand what my saved views are. So if I were to double click on one of these saved views, we'll see that it looks very different. If I was to press Command L, Control L, or Option Element Attributes Layer Settings, I could go and turn on layers and turn off layers one at a time. Of course, I've got a lot of them. So that's where having a layer combination is very helpful. So if I extend this a bit, we see that I'm currently on a setting, a layer combination called RMD Plan Floor Presentation. So as that name suggests, this is a layer combination set for presentation, but I could just as easily go in here and change that to documentation. We see that'll change it slightly. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean anything because it's up to me what I put on each of those layer combinations. If I want to understand those, again, Control L, I can see when I click on each of them, they'll have different settings. And now, just like I did before, I could go into here and then choose to turn for floor plan, bleh, plan floor presentation, I could turn those trees back on, press update, otherwise it won't be permanent. And then in documentation, I can make sure that they're not on. So in that way, I could have a saved view with the trees or I could change this saved view to documentation and then that would be without trees. So using saved views with layer combinations is very important. We don't want to just use custom layer settings because that's going to mean that we need to change each layer every time we want to view it in a particular way. So we could use that to toggle on and off what we're trying to achieve. Uh, we just have to be careful that we're not also, by doing that, losing other information. So we see that this slab is called floor structure, and when I went back to my documentation, that disappeared. Now, that shouldn't be the case, it's just that there's a problem with the layer combination. So I'll go into layer combinations, and just make sure that floor structure is turned back on so we can still see it here. So at the moment, what is this? This is based on just a an offset. So we're just looking at a massing diagram. Now to understand how big this is, when we use our fill tool, our fill tool gives us the ability to show area text. So I, I really like, as an example, using this. We can change the color, maybe we'll make it blue, 50%, make the background clear, and I'm going to show area text. Uh, I'll use magic wand rather than having to redraw the shape, which of course we could do using the polygonal method because it's not a, a normal rectangle. And click to show the area text. If I've already drawn the shape, I could just go magic wand, which is spacebar, and then that would do that for me much faster. Now, this text is a bit small to see at this scale, so I'm going to make this text bigger. Now I can readily see that. Now this is currently all at the same size on each of our stories, mostly. We see that the very top one is 
shortened, uh, but I could be changing the size of each one of these stories, and I might do that uh, a little bit later once I've started. Um, what we'll do is we'll model it just like it is at the moment, so we're massing all the way to the edge of the building envelope, and then in a, a later video, we'll look at how to shrink these, terrace them so they become smaller on each story, and see what effect that has on the shadow diagram. So again, some videos that you'll watch uh, that you see some people do in ARCHICAD tutorials, they sort of do everything perfectly, and, and the problem with doing things perfectly is you don't understand necessarily what could go wrong. Uh, what I tend to like doing is sometimes making little mistakes deliberately and sometimes just making mistakes because I'm not perfect. Um, but by doing something wrong and then showing you how to fix it, it's hopefully also showing you how to troubleshoot for yourself. So we've got a fill and we've got a slab. Sometimes if I am trying to select one and I can't when they're over the top of each other, if I've got my magnet turned on, if I press my tab button, that allows me to toggle between the different elements. So if I want to actually select not the slab but the fill, I can click that and then I could either delete that or move that away. So the only problem with a fill is it's a two-dimensional object. We can, with a slab, have a cover fill, but unfortunately that cover fill doesn't give us an option for a area calculation. If it did I'd be very, very pleased. So Archicad or Graphisoft, please develop that for us and have a, an area calculation on a slab. But of course, the real reason why they don't do that is because there is another element that exists called a zone tool, which can, for massing, work like a slab. And it, of course, does do area and uh, volume calculations as well. I don't really use zones, I don't really like them, uh, I've never really found a benefit for them. I'm sure there is benefits but not for necessarily the sort of work or the way that I work. So we're just going to keep it simple for now and just use slabs. Uh, if we want to do an area calculation I'll use a fill like that like I did before but for now we're just going to use slabs and maybe just a wall tool to help represent, uh, to give this volume uh, a defined edge. So if I understand this uh, in section, if I measure from the top of my slab to the top of my slab, what is that? That's 3 meters. If I measure from the top to the bottom, that's 2.8. So I've got this as a 200 millimeter thick slab. So I could, let's just start now, if I wanted to draw walls around my basement walls, I could go into my wall tool. Now, I could choose different types of wall tools. It doesn't really matter which type I'm using, particularly if I'm going to use my magic wand. If I go into my wall selection, it doesn't, again, really matter what wall thickness I'm using if this is just for um, massing. But what I would generally want to do is make sure that it's a fairly thick wall so it's a true representation of uh, a reality. So maybe a, a double brick or a cavity brick, a 270 wide wall but I don't really want it to show like a, a brick wall. I want to show it just a solid fill. So I'm going to leave it at 270, but just use the solid fill option. All right. So now that I've got my um, slab, I've got this also this line, which is a polyline showing my setback. How do I do this? How do I draw the wall? Like I said, I could draw it separately. Now you see that I'm doing something I wouldn't normally do. I'm drawing this in a clockwise direction. Now this doesn't really matter as long as I'm understanding which is my outside face and which is the reference side. When I'm drawing you see that the, there's a thicker line to the wall and the thicker line means that's the reference line. So if I was to draw this in a clockwise direction one wall at a time, that would still work and if I wanted to select these walls, we'd see they'd all join or mitre nicely. And if I was to change the thickness, let's make it 400 just to be a bit crazy, we'd see that it would offset on the inside. And if I was to change the thickness, that's probably what I want to do. So that would work, and of course I could make it thinner if I wanted to as well. Uh, alternatively, if I was to draw my wall, 
all I would need to do is to flip that so I could draw in the correct orientation in Archicad in an anti-clockwise direction or counterclockwise direction. Why is this important? It's a, it's a standard in Archicad and there's some times that we don't have the option of which way we're flipping an element such as a wall and so therefore doing it the right direction makes a lot of sense. Also if I was to get my wall tool and now try to rather than drawing those independently magic wand it we see that that will mean that it's in the right direction whereas if that was flipped it might not work. So it's important to understand why we do things. Um, I'm doing this video a little bit slower uh, because this is an advanced tool I guess to, to understand massing to a degree but definitely to understand um, sun studies and shadow diagrams so I'm going to get there but I want to take my time with you with these videos just so you can follow along at home so we've got some walls on this floor now I, what you'd note that I didn't do is pay any attention to the height of my walls so if I select these walls, what have I done then? Because I drew them all as one by using the magic wand tool, we see that they automatically grouped. The suspend option allows us to select those independently, or if we enable grouping, that keeps them all together. For ease of selection, it's much better if they're grouped. Now if I select those walls and go into the settings, we see that it's currently set to 2700, which is not correct. We could either set this from the top of the slab to the underside of slab which would mean that we'd need to set this at 2800 or we could set this from the top of slab to the top of the next slab which would mean we'd set this at 3000. The problem with either of these options is if I was to change my story settings later I then have to go back into these settings and change it so that's sort of dumb so thankfully Archicad's created a, a better tool which allows us to instead of having the wall not linked, to have it linked to the next story. So what this is, we can see that it's grey, so that's saying from the zero of our basement story to the zero of our ground story or floor is three metres. So if I wanted to have it from, from wall to wall, sorry, floor to floor, I could leave that at 3,000. Or if I wanted it to be from the top of slab to the underside of slab, I could change that to minus 200 and we'd see that that would automatically update to 2800. Now that might seem a bit silly, hopefully in application you'd understand that that's very beneficial uh, because of course we probably don't need three meters from floor to floor in our basement. So I've drawn that and now I'm going to copy this setting Rather than redrawing these walls, I can literally edit, copy, go up a story, and edit, paste, or right click, paste, or control V, or do, or do the same thing. And I could do this on each of the stories that has this setting. Now, I'll do this on the last one as well, even though this is not right. If I go into my 3D, We'll see that that's mostly worked, and I, I've used red for my slab, not because the slab should be red, but it's just going to make it really clear for you to see what I'm doing. We see that this wall on the top story is extended all the way out, whereas this slab does not. So that's not very good. What are we going to do about that? We can edit it. So once we've drawn it, we could draw it correctly the first time, or we could edit it later. And that's what I'm trying to show you, that even if I do it wrong, I can always change it later. Right click on my roof, show as trace reference. And what I can do, I could do this in a few different ways, I can move this wall in and I can trim or I can use my intersect tool to trim this wall. Now the problem with this, if I select both these walls and say I want to intersect those, did it the wrong way. Why? Because this length is longer and the intersect tool will always cut off the shorter length. So therefore I could either select this and drag it myself to make it the right length. Now I have to be very careful that I keep this straight. So I'm going to hold shift and move till this turns to black and then hopefully that's right. We see it's not quite right so I made a mistake when I was dragging the one before but that's fine. So now that they're close to correct I could now press intersect. Or what's the other option? 
I could use another tool. So I also, if I press my command or control, that's going to turn my cursor into scissors. And if I click, that's going to cut that side. And we just see that because I accidentally move this wall out of alignment, I'd have to select these and again intersect those. Or I could undo and just select this one and stretch it individually. Either of those options will work. So now we've reduced that. And what does this one mean? We still want the slab to extend and we're effectively saying that this is a roof or a, maybe a terrace. So if I go into my 3D, we see that that now works nicely for us. So what am I doing? I'm creating massing. I'm creating a, a massed object and the 3D massing is going to be able to help me understand uh, the potential of building on this site and what that will mean for shadow casting and um, I'm also going to do it as a shadow diagram as well as a sun study. So we're using a lot more of the site than we should so I'm not saying that this is practical or possible for this site I'm just trying to give you an example. So that's good. Now what happens if I want to make changes? Because it's very common that once we've drawn something, and particularly if we're using it as a massing tool or a design tool, that we're going to want to make changes. But we want to make them fast. We don't want those changes to take a long time to come into effect. So earlier in this video, I talked about the idea that currently all of my stories are three meters floor to floor. We can also go into the story settings to see that. Oh, sorry, wrong, wrong button. Right click, story settings. So we see they're all three meters. But I also said that we don't really need our basement to be three meters tall. So if we were to reduce that to, let's say, 2700, then theoretically, under normal circumstance, we then need to adjust what we've created. But because we set up this wall as a linked wall, meaning that the height was whatever the story height is minus 200, that means this wall has automatically adjusted and it still is at the right height. So again, just by being a little bit thoughtful and using the settings the way that they were designed to be used, we've made a big change potentially to our project, which means we see that we're now within our maximum height envelope, whereas before we were slightly outside of it. And we did it very quickly. And we didn't have to make extra changes to our model in order to see that that would work. So we see that that now represents in section. We see that that represents on each of our floor plans, although it's not very detailed or developed. And we see that that represents in 3D in terms of our building envelope. Now we have to understand this site in terms of a mesh. So the mesh that I've selected is our site for this project and there's a mesh all the way around it that I've created with not as much detail uh, but this is to represent the context or the surrounding sites and that's really important because if we don't have anything here we can't cast a shadow onto it. So that's the end of this video for our massing. Um, I'm going to come back and do a second video for massing later and we're going to reduce the size of the envelope and, and step it in on the stories above ground. But for now, that's fine. Um, come and watch the next video, and we're going to look at how to create shadow diagrams and sun studies of this.